and lorikeets, their main diet actually consists of pollen and nectar. And so we actually got to look at her tongue. You would see at the very end of it is shaped just like a paintbrush. It's got tiny little bristles right on the edge. They actually use to reach the flowers and lap up the pollen and nectar. Now, lollipop there is a very entertaining bird. She's one of my favorite animals here. She's going to do her little bat impression. The lorikeets are also nicknamed the bat birds. She may do a little bit of a walkabout on the road to give you a little wave. Feel free to wave back. She loves the attention. She also sometimes does a little dance, and they have several different behaviors that she can do. Now, she is a blue mountain rainbow lorikeet, also known as a Swanson lorikeet. There are a lot of different species of lorikeets, and we actually have two of them. All right, now everybody can make it really good. Aww, aren't they adorable? This is Streaky. He's the one a little bit bigger, one a little bit further away from me, and the one closest to me is Fussy. Now, they are full-grown Dama wallabies. They're also known as Tamar wallabies. In fact, uh, Streaky is a very big boy. He's actually about 17 pounds, and that's a pretty big size for a Dama wallaby. Now, these guys actually have a very interesting history to them. They were the first kangaroos to be seen by the European explorers. We're going to bring out Vincent here. There he comes. Now, Vincent is so special to us, he actually gives his own name song. Come on, Vincent. He's still kind of learning his way into the arena. <laughs> He's like, but I want to love his first name. All right, this is Vincent. He is a, uh, a little bit over two years old. He's a western gray kangaroo. As you can see, he's a little bit smaller than those boys you saw in the bachelor field, so he obviously has some growing to do. You can see he absolutely loves coming out here. He was hand-raised, so he kind of considers Lisa to be one of his mob mates. And so he absolutely loves coming out here getting scratches and everything. Now, if you take a look at those ears of his as he's coming around, you're going to see in his right ear, right in the middle, he has a notch for 40. He also has a hole in the middle of that ear that corresponds to the V position. Then if you take a look at his left ear at the top of it, there's a notch for two. That makes him western gray V42. <laughs> now Vincent here is a prime example of why the system is so important. When he was very young, he was just a joey at foot, we kind of noticed that him and his mother Victoria were acting just a little bit strange. We decided to bring him in, check him out, make sure everything was okay. Now we did actually find that Victoria was a little bit sick and needed some antibiotics. So. Since she had those notches and holes in her ears, we knew exactly who she was. We were able to give her her antibiotics every day. She's happy and healthy now. And she's actually out in that outback field. You may have seen her on the truck. And <laughs> these are Western Gray Kangaroos, and being males, they do like to play box a lot. In fact, these guys are very good friends. We actually find them play boxing almost all the time when we go out into a field. And what play boxing is, is a natural little kind of like a sport between kangaroos. Males, females do it, all joeys do it. It's just a natural social kangaroo behavior, just like little kids do when they're kind of wrestling around with each other. Now, as I said, they're that browsing species. You all saw those tree wraps and guards in our fields, right? Because the kangaroos will eat the branches and the leaves and the bark sometimes too. But look at Derek, he's kind of short. So how does he reach up into those trees to get those branches down? Well, he's going to give you a little demonstration here. Get your cameras ready. He's going to reach up nice and tall and get those leaves down. Now he's become very good at this. He's had to put even taller rats in his yard. He can actually reach over six feet. Some of our big boys can reach over nine feet. Come on down. Now, <laughs> now, Pearson and Vincent have been learning this as well. Pearson, uh, he kind of just reaches up really tall, but he's a little bit lazy because he knows Derek's taller than him. So sometimes he just waits till Derek pulls the branches down and he'll come along and get the leaves. Now, Vincent here, Vincent keeps trying to prove how much of a big boy he is. And so he's been trying to reach up for the leaves too. And he's still kind of learning how to get his balance right. <laughs> so, and he gets so excited. Sometimes he'll even jump, and he gets our special sound effects as well. <laughs> now, Vincent here, I was actually very impressed when he first started doing this. Because he's still kind of learning his balance, he actually cheats sometimes. And either uses the rope or uses the keeper to reach the branches. <laughs> now, you saw them reaching up nice and tall like that. You saw Derek kind of play boxing with Vincent a little bit. And so, when they reach up nice and tall and they're leaning on the tails of theirs, you might start to think about what kangaroos are most famous for. Boxing, right? Before we go any further, I want to make sure everybody understands that kangaroos are not aggressive animals. You can hop as fast as these guys can. You're not going to stick around for a fight. If a human or another animal comes around and they can get away, they're just going to hop away. 
So when you hear stories or see videos of people watching with kangaroos, it's either because that kangaroo has either been cornered, threatened, possibly even beaten, and the only way he can feel he can defend himself is to box that. <laughs> All right, here we go. I got her. <laughs> Woo, that was a lot of work. I need some lunch. <laughs> Obviously, we are joking with you. Both of these girls were hand raised, so they never had to be caught up in the net. And in fact, when Rosie tolerating us for that old 10 seconds, she gets tons of love and lots of treats. <laughs> Obviously, it's not quite that easy when we go out to the field. But these are female red kangaroos. But they don't really look brick red, do they? I'm not sure if I'll explain to you, but the female red kangaroos usually have more of that bluish grayish coloration. They're also nicknamed the blue flyers because of their colors and how fast they can hop. Now these are female red kangaroos. Can anybody see those little bulges in their pouches? Take a really good look right at the bottom of their pouch. I know you know where the tree is at. <laughs> Both of these girls do have joeys. They're both about the size of a small squirrel. So there's that tiny little bulge right there. Yes. And actually, <laughs> Emily's excited today. She's like, where's my treats? I know where they're at. I know where my treats are at. <laughs> okay. So when those joeys are first born, they're tiny little itty bitty, itty bitty joeys. They're only about the size of a bumblebee or a gum there, right? They make that track out mom's abdomen and down into her pouch and stay there for almost a whole year. Does anybody know what that pouch opening actually looks like? A little zippered opening, throw your cell phone and your keys in there? Maybe, maybe not. Well, we're pretty lucky today. If, if Emily feels up to it, we're going to kind of show you what that opening looks like a little bit here. There we go. She's starting to get a little bit heavier with that new Joey, so it's getting a little bit more difficult. But if you take a look right about halfway up her abdomen, you'll see a little what looks like a furry belly button. Now my fingers are kind of cold and she does have that joey down there, so I'm not going to open it up. But this opening is actually surrounded by a group of muscles that works just like a drawstring bag. She can open it up nice and wide or keep it nice and close tight to keep that joey in there nice and warm. That little belly button looks thing right there, that's her opening. Now this opening can actually open up wide enough to support up to a 15 pound joey. Now, if you think about it, that's a pretty interesting feat because, <laughs> because I believe there's only about 45 pounds. So when that Joey gets to full capacity, she's going to be carrying around a third of her weight. Good job, Ellie. <laughs> now, that Joey is in there for the first seven months or so, in that pouch nursing for mom. Doesn't come out at all. What comes in must go out, right? <laughs> She's like, I don't care, I want those treats, give them to me. <laughs> now, so, um, how do kangaroo mothers actually keep their joeys and their pouches clean? Well, I'll tell you what, they have this treat. What do you 